So initially, he said, when Avalokasthevara Bodhisattva was cultivating or practicing the profound prajna paramita, he illuminated the five skandhas. You know what is the five skandhas, is it, by now? The five aggregates of form and mind. When he say he illuminated, in Mandarin is Zhao Jian. Means it's like illuminate and realize that they are all empty. Zhao Jian, Wu Yun Jie Kong. You think he used a torchlight to illuminate? No, then what did he use? Her awareness nature, that one shine for. Then he realized that they are all empty. Well, without his awareness nature, you cannot. This is your true mind, the silent mind, that can see things as they are, that can illuminate clearly. So he used the awareness nature to illuminate. That's why without the awareness nature, the true mind, sati, the stability of it, leading to heedfulness, you cannot awaken, you cannot understand. So this is how Kuan Yin realized. And then when he realized they are all empty, he crossed beyond what? Huh? Beyond what? Read. Ah, all suffering and? Ah, means no more problem, understand? No? Everything has been realized and understood. Then he told Sariputta what? Form is, ah, sorry, form does not differ from emptiness. And emptiness does not differ from form. For form itself is emptiness, and emptiness itself is form. So too are the other aggregates of feeling, perception or cognition, formation or sankara, and consciousness or vijnana. How many of you can comprehend this? Why did Kuan Yin Bodhisattva to Sariputta Form does not differ from emptiness. Emptiness does not differ from form. Can you understand? Okay. Now you look at the word. Form does not differ from emptiness. Can you comprehend? Let's say, eh, this solid cube, or any of our external form, they are all form. Yes, Anna. So this form, you must inquire. Why did Kuan Yin say this form does not differ from emptiness? And emptiness does not differ from this form. Why? What is emptiness? Don't be gullible. No? The word emptiness, you must inquire. No? The scientists will challenge you. No? If you say space is empty. Maybe they will agree, understand? But if you tell that within our planet, with the atmosphere, you say this is empty, we are nothing there. He said, no, got air, understand? And he can tell you how many percent oxygen, how many percent nitrogen, and how many percent rare gases. Well, they did the research, R&D, they can find out. So, empty of what? Emptiness has great meaning, very deep. Empty nature of existence is true emptiness, understand? Means the wisdom that realizes the profound meaning of emptiness. We stay in a conditioned world, existential world, which is dependent originating, condition arising, causal phenomenon. So this type of world has its own duality and existential truth within. But when it comes to understanding this, all those enlightened beings, they will know whatever that is dependent, originating, condition arising, cause of phenomena, is not a permanent, unchanging entity. Not you. Not an utter that you can say, this is me, this is I, therefore all this can be mine. No. Then if they are impermanent, dependent, originating, 
Without Atta, is there any reality? Just like the Heart Sutta realized, in true emptiness, there is no old age, sickness and death, no birth. He know you, he know me. And Hui Neng realized no mark, no mark of a self, no mark of others, and no mark of existence. Then like what I share with you all, moment to moment life passes by. What are you doing? And this is the present moment, highest in life. You know? And split second, that moment is dead and gone. You know? The highest in life is the present moment, and it is so transient, understand? The moment you talk about it is gone. The next moment, another arise. So, when you look at life, when you look at existence, that's why those who realize they know empty nature of existence. But ultimately, you cannot deny that since birth until now, all these things that you experience and go through happen. Understand? Not? But I ask you, is it real? Real in the sense that it happened. Understand? Not? But that moment I ask you, these are all? Ah, past. You can only recall through what? Memory. And what is memory? Images. Understand? Not? Created by the mundane thinking, mundane consciousness. So where got reality? That's why I say, at any time, after the cultivator realized and become enlightened, that was what happened to me in 1989. This form and mind can just die, no problem. He will not worry about anything. There are no reality. Understand not? He know you, he know me. And everything is just like my teacher say. Mighty nature rolling by, following nature's law, you understand? That's why it's empty. But please understand that within existence, it has its own condition, Dhamma, its own reality. There is such thing as duty, such thing as relationship, such thing as old age, sickness and death, such thing as law of karma. All this exists. That's why when you come, when your nature manifests as a form and mind to come to this existential world, then it has its own reality. You have to understand that to live life within the existential world. But like the Heart Sutta say, in true emptiness, all those that is thought doesn't exist. So empty nature here means not only empty of everything, it's not empty like nothingness. There are things, but not real. They are empty in the sense that empty nature of existence. You understand that sentence. Existence is empty, no reality one. But if you want to give it meaning, reality, through the thought process, the memory, there is a lot, understand? But that pertains to the conditioned world. That's why duality exists within the conditioned world. The conditioned Dhamma exists within the conditioned world. You can cultivate the conditioned Dhamma to liberate and free and realize the unconditioned. That's why the Buddha say, if it's not because of the existence of the unconditioned, which is Nibbana, escape from the conditioned world is impossible. And now you realize, conditioned world is all Condition arising cause of phenomena. How can you free? That's why the Buddha said the Dhamma is akaliko, beyond thought, beyond mind, beyond the condition world. You must realize the unconditioned. That is the meaning. So here, when you talk about emptiness, the first explanation is just now what I explained to you is the deeper one. Understand not? The Everything, all phenomena has the universal characteristics of anichang, dukkang, and anatta. That's why it's not real, not what you think. It's not a permanent, unchanging entity. That's why he know you, he know me. Then, empty nature of existence. But the first, most crude and easy to understand thing that Kuan Yin told Sariputta is, he said, 
form does not differ from emptiness. And emptiness does not differ from form. So how can you reconcile this? Now I ask you another question. Before this form arise, what was this space within? Ah, nothing, is it? Empty, is it? Of course, the scientists want to argue, got egg or what, not important. Understand? What is important is before this arise, because it's dependent originating, it was just space, empty space. Understand? Then you introduce the form. You put this form in. Then you only perceive form, but you don't perceive what was before the form. Understand? Or not? That's why you cannot see why Kuan Yin say form does not differ from the original space which is empty. Emptiness. The emptiness does not differ from the form that has taken over its space. Understand? Or not? Our perception is all like that. Externally, all this external form, there is no word. Understand? Or not? This chair doesn't know that he is a chair, understand or not? Or you call it yi zi, uh, or gorosi. This one, no word, nothing one, understand or not? But how do we perceive it? We go through memory, understand or not? Then we give it a labor, we labor it. Then we give it a concept. Then it arises already, exists already. Uh, then through the what they call relative convention of our society, we keep on giving it name. Different language give different word and different name. That's why the world argue a lot. Understand? You say in English, this is uh, what chair, armchair or whatever. Then another guy with another language, they will tell you something else. So all these are subject to the way they perceive it and the way they name it. They can use different words. But everything points towards the same entity, isn't it? True or not? This one actually got no word. That's why the Buddha said, thing is just the way it is. No right, no wrong, no good, no bad. No whatever name or label. When you see things as they are, this is suchness, direct seeing as it is, without the word, without the concept. And this is the direct seeing. So Kuan Yin, he used that nature when he insight into phenomena, he realized there is nothing inside there. Understand? Zhao Jian Wu Yun Jie Kong. But this five aggregate of form and mind, like the Buddha came to realize underneath the Bodhi tree when he became enlightened, he realized that they do not belong to him. Why? We have the form goes the way of nature. Then feeling, what is feeling? Feeling come and go. He didn't die. Understand not? Then feeling is dependent originating, condition arising. Cause of, without the senses, without the consciousness, without contact, feeling cannot arise. You understand? That's why they are dependent originating. Then if feeling is you, if feeling change from pleasant to unpleasant, did you die? You didn't die, eh? So how can feeling be you? And since they come and go, it does not belong to you, it's not you, then it has the universal characteristics of impermanent following nature's law. Where it's dependent originating, condition arising, right? that's why it's like that. That perception also same. Indeed, the senses and the consciousness through memory and the brain, it perceive. Perception come and go. This moment you perceive that, next moment you perceive the other thing. If perception is you, you should die when the perception changes. Right? But you didn't die. Then all your sankara activity, your emotion, your whatever feeling, sensation, emotion, they come and they go, you didn't die. So how can they be you? Then consciousness arise and pass away. Seeing, hearing, smell, taste, tactile, and thought. Same. 
Then when you realize this is your inner awareness nature, you suddenly awaken. All these aggregate, they come and they go. That's why it's empty nature or existence. It doesn't belong to you, understand that? But the question is, if it doesn't belong to you, it's not you, then why did they arise in you? Have you ever contemplated that? If it's not you, why did it arise in you? Then who are you? What are you? And this is meditation. This is what the wisdom of the Buddha and Kuan Yin and all those great beings has. So from here, you should zero in and awaken. If they are not you, that's why the Buddha in the first Noble Truth final summary, what did he say? In short, it is due to your sakadity that condition you to grasp at these five aggregates of form and mind, which is rupang, vedana, sanya, sankara, and vinyanang, that I call dukkha. If you know that they are empty, they are impermanent, then why you grasp and cling and want things your way and suffer? That is really bodo. Huh? The word is bodo. Uh, stupid. That's why you don't blame Mahayana for changing the word. Huh? Uh, Sakaya uh, No, no. Uh, greed, hatred, and delusion. Huh? Uh, stupidity, they say. Uh, uh, stupidity. They use the word stupidity. Huh? A lot of people get very offended. Huh? Uh, but really, like, it be realized. Stupid. Eh? <laughs> Everything is not real, and yet. You think that feeling belongs to you. You want good feeling. You attach to good feeling. That's why you suffer, Anasana. You want beautiful perception, nice perception, Anasana. Those that you don't like, you push away. But in the first place, who created all this light and this light? All this way of perception? It's your brain, Anasana, your conditioning, your belief system. So when you see with the awareness that this is the magician creating all this to lure you, to distract you, and to delude you, then you wake up, understand or not? Well, I live in an existential world. There are what they call the aggregates arising and passing away. There is a phenomenal world of consciousness and form. There is the mundane mind. The moment I awaken and realize this, then I got no problem with that. I know how to return. You know. Then I realize there is an awareness nature within, which is the deathless element, and never die. But that one is not a being. That one cannot come out and live life. Then my mystery is resolved. Understand? That's why the Buddha got no more problem. We always think that the but the form and mind is not him. That's how he awakened. Understand? That's why when Kuan Yin realized this, he realized the empty nature of existence. So he tried to guide Sariputta to go in. Form does not differ from emptiness. Emptiness does not differ from form. For form itself is actually empty. Ah, that is the empty nature of existence. Understand? Not? You understand? Ah. So the meaning is very clear. Nothing abstract about the Heart Sutta. But people cannot understand. He said, what type of teaching is it? Emptiness is emptiness. Ah. Form is form. Ah. How can form does not differ from emptiness? Emptiness does not differ. So they become very confused. You know why? They use the thinking mind, the mundane mind, the instrument that is limited. You cannot penetrate. That's why you cannot understand. So clear. Huh? Ah, okay.